into the ring. What's up, everybody, and welcome to the Clark College Smash Esports Open. I am Jem, and I am joined here by Eyes. Hello, gamers. What's up? Um, so we are here with a round-robin format. Uh, the way that that works for those who are uninitiated is every player in this tournament will play everybody else once. Um, it's going to be a best of three matches in each each time that you play someone. So you got to win two before you are considered the winner. And at the end of that, we'll take the win-loss records of each player, and we will set them up against each other, and that is how we'll figure this out. Um, so while we are getting everybody into the arena, it looks like we have Brian in here already. I believe that's uh, Brian Newell. Am I right about that? Newell? Yeah. Okay, so we will uh, be getting the players in in just a second. There is a procedure that they will go through once they're both in here for figuring out what characters they're going to play and what stages they're going to play. So we need to give them just a second to work that out. In the meantime, we'd like to introduce ourselves. We are Bravest Esports. Um, we may have uh, done a couple of tournaments for you guys in the past, but for those of you who are new, um, we are a company. Uh, we're not formally affiliated with the school or anything, but uh, we are hired out to help work out the logistics of running the tournament. Our job is to try and bring esports communities together, um, and one of the ways we do that is by running events like these. So thanks for having us out here. Um, we love doing what we do, and we're happy to see all of y'all interested in coming out for some Smash Bros. Um, one thing I'm going to do really quick is get the names updated because we do know who our first players are going to be. We're going to have uh, Newell Brian, at least on Discord, versus Foxy. I'm going to check really quick and make sure I have the IGNs ready for those players. Um, sometimes, you know, people sign up with uh, different names between their Discord tag and their in-game name. Um, so I just want to make sure that we're representing them right on stream here. All right, looks like it. So this is Newell Bryan. We'll put him in as such. And his opponent is going to be Foxy. There we go. Just like that. All right. So we're still waiting on Foxy to pop into the arena here. Here we are. So for those of you who might be a little bit new to the way that this works, um, we run everything through battle arenas. Uh, this is a way that you can create private matches online in Smash Ultimate. Um, everything else is, of course, match made with random opponents, so there's almost no way that you're going to run into the right person there. Um, there it is. 
But, uh... To start off, both players are going to choose their characters, and so through direct messages, they're just going to let each other know what character they're playing. And then there's a stage selection process that is outlined in the match procedure section of the Discord. Um, the reason that we have this process is that some stages give advantages to certain playstyles, and so as a result of that, we tailor the rules so that the players each have a certain amount of agency over which stage the match is played on. Um, and this is the standard rule set that you will find at any competitive Smash tournament. You, you know, anything from your your local tournament to, to Genesis, you know, any place is going to use a very similar rule set to this. And really all that's going to change around that much is uh, which stages exactly are on the stage list. So. Any of that information that you need for reference, you can find in hashtag match procedure in the Discord. All right. Um, so it looks like we're still trying to track down Foxy. <laughs> Foxy is labeled on Discord as playing Minecraft. Uh, I mean... We've got the next closest thing to Minecraft. I, th I think that's kind of inarguable. You know, Steve is here. We have a Minecraft stage. You know, we're playing Minecraft music. Like, come play Minecraft with us. <laughs> yeah, they're uh, they're grinding up the diamonds. That's what they want. They need mm -hmm. they need the diamonds, and then once they once they get you know full full diamond armor, they'll I think they'll make their way. He's oh, just warming up his Steve. <laughs> yeah, warming <laughs> warming up his Steve. I love it. Man, I wish it were as easy to get diamond in the actual game of Minecraft as it is in Smash. I gotta stand, do is stand there for a couple seconds. Like, imagine how broken that would be. <laughs> it's like we're playing creative mode up in here. It probably takes longer in creative mode to get diamond than it does in Smash Ultimate. A lot more inputs because you'd have to type out diamonds or keep scrolling through and to get to the, you know, get there. Versus here, you just kind of like. All right, let me just wait three seconds with, and uh, there we go. <laughs> they gave Steve in Smash godlike powers, didn't they? The ability to just produce these materials instantly. <laughs> just... Either that, or they're putting him on some very mineral-rich battlefields out here. Like that's true. That they're just there's just diamonds like laying on the on the ground. There's, I don't know why they're making like Lilat Cruz's spaceship out of diamonds. That seems a little excessive, doesn't it? Well, diamond is pretty strong to be fair. Yeah, I guess so. I mean, it's not going to not going to take as much damage maybe that way. Yeah. And it would look pretty. Yeah, it's, it's sparkle, I suppose. All right. So we got our, our early round DQs, it's looking like it's probably going to happen here. Um, since this is a round robin, one of the nice things about this is that uh, even if someone's opponents aren't showing up, you know, we've got one person in the lobby, we could just take somebody else and have them play on stream next. So this shouldn't take too much longer to find someone to get in here. Send a message here just a minute ago. Ah, okay. Well... We're getting it all worked out. Um, just because we all showed up doesn't necessarily mean everybody else remembered to. Meantime, though. How's it going, Clark? You guys have a great mascot. You guys are penguins. Penguins are amazing. Penguins are beautiful. We love them. Yeah, and you guys also have... Uh, I haven't seen your, your mascot outfit, but like... You guys don't know how lucky you have it. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> um, yeah, just, uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> there, there are some pretty creative ones out here. All right. What's that abomination? <laughs> um, that is Bobby Beacon. Of... We love Bobby Beacon. <laughs> <laughs> we do, we do. The, the Beacons. Shoot, I'm, I'm forgetting off the top of my head which school is that. 
Um, Bobby Beacon from... Boston? UMass Boston. That sounds right. Um, UMB, yeah, University of Massachusetts, Boston. That's what it is. Yep. Um, he, he's <laughs> a, a beacon of hope to our troubled times. Bob, Bobby Beacon built different. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, update from our TOs here. Um, because Brian's opponent is not showing up, and because Zatami and Taylor are both ready to go, what we're going to do here is I'm going to uh, very politely kick Brian, uh, and then we're going to have Zatami and Taylor... Oh, thanks, he, he left before I could kick him. That's it's like, ah, you can't kick me, I quit! Um, <laughs> we're we're going to get Zatami and quit. Taylor into this lobby, and we're going to be able to actually spectate their match from here. Um, if it ends up being the three players, we can still run around Robin. It's not like this is messing up our bracket or anything like that. Um, we'll still just, you know, have everybody play everybody else. It'll just be a few fewer matches than we had uh, previously planned. So, yep, yeah, we'll sometimes this happens, you know, every single tournament from the biggest to the smallest, you know, someone's going to sign up ahead of time and then forget, oversleep, have homework due the next day or something like that and not be able to come on in. Who knows, maybe maybe someone broke their arm, maybe someone fell into a coma. You, you, you hate to see it, but it happens. So. <laughs> or sleeping. Just just good old sleeping. Just Wouldn't join this tournament, what? but I somehow missed all info about it. Are you a uh, student at Clark? Honestly, we could probably slip the end here. Oh. Go ahead, sign I don't up. really see a reason we couldn't at this point. This Hope you'll join the next one. Yeah, there is another one I think in a week, isn't there? That sounds right. I think that actually. Let me double check that. Yeah. Um. The, the thing is, we would need to. Uh, we we would you need need you to fill out the form, get the registration link, and uh, go through there. Um. Because the school is. Uh, keeping track of those people but yeah, there's a, oh yeah there's actually a, uh, a smash on the uh yeah it, okay exactly 30th, the same time the next week yep um, there's one every friday for the next four weeks oh that's awesome so we're gonna be oh, doing a lot well, of clock. There's, four, there's four tournaments the next two are smash and then the two after are animal crossing but yes there is four clark on the fridays yeah so just drop on so, yeah. through uh, for the, the one on next Friday. That would be a perfect way for you to, to get you in. Um, <coughs> okay. Like somebody already signed up for it. So uh, Zatami and Taylor, if you guys are listening, uh, you can check announcements for the ID and password that you need to get into this lobby. I mean, I guess you could also just kind of look up in the upper right and find the ID that way. Uh, but the password is there in announcements as well. So what you want to do is go to online and then battle arenas, or sorry, smash, then battle arenas, and then join arena and use the information that is in there to jump right into this. So, Eyes, have you had a chance to play with Steve at all yet? I know you've been busy, but... I I have not, but boy would I like to see someone use him. <laughs> because it just looks meme-tastic, really. That, that, is, that is the best way to describe the clips that I've seen of Steve, is the meme level is just, oh, sensational. Yeah, there's there's some really beautiful things about it. Looks like Eyes stepped out of the arena here. Did you get a disconnect or something? Eyes? Uh oh. Eyes? Um, Are you, you you alive? You alive, buddy? Oh no. Well. We have at least one pair of eyes that is here upon the stream. 
We'll see if we can get him back here shortly. Oh, well. Sorry, folks. Uh, the arena took a little bit too long to be populated here, and so we're going to have to uh, really quickly create a new one, and we'll get you the new information for the arena in the announcements. There is kind of a time limit, um, and we understand why. It's so that uh, we're not chewing up bandwidth by just kind of sitting here not doing anything in the lobby. Sometimes I imagine uh, people are going to have a lobby open and forget that they do, and they'll just kind of leave it up there chugging on those airwaves. So Smash will automatically sh close it down after a set amount of time. Uh, thing is, that means that y'all have a time limit to get in here, and y'all were slowpokes. So now we've got a new lobby that we've got to put out to all y'all. And I'm doing that right now. 8VW08. PW, none of yo business. There we go. All right, we have word from Zatami from two minutes ago that they are coming. This is promising. Rip eyes will be missed. I concur. He's a good man. He's a godlike Rocket League player, by the way. Like, he's the highest rank you can possibly be in Rocket League. Um, not quite up to, like, pro level, but he's definitely close. Um, was also, uh, in one of the earlier seasons, number one on console in Fortnite. So, definitely a Gosu gamer, if there ever was one. While we're getting everybody in here, uh, let's talk really quickly. Um, so we are Bravest Esports, I've mentioned this already. Our mission is to help build esports communities, make them stronger, get more people involved in them. One event that we run in order to help do that, in addition to these events that we do for schools, is we have a national championship. You can see it's on December 11th and 12th. Um, this is a qualifier event for that tournament. Um, we give every tournament that we run the opportunity to qualify its winner into the national championships that we hold. Uh, in this case, it'll be in December. And so the winner of this tournament will be able to go on and play against the winners of any other school that we have run tournaments for. So you get a really cool mix of players from all over the country, lots of different characters, lots of different play styles. Um, I imagine it's a great experience for the competitors involved to get a lot of good practice that way. So, ooh, is that eyes? Do we have eyes back? Oh my gosh, the internet. It's recovered. Huzzah! He's alive. <laughs> you, love, you love to see it. Alrighty. Awesome. Well, we've got Zatami in here. We're just waiting on Taylor to make an appearance. Um, hopefully, they're getting that all worked out. Let's see. Yeah, the, uh... Well, I don't, I don't know if you've been having this issue, but my internet provider in my area and a lot of Arizona because everyone is at home has been doing just tons and tons of like server updates and expanding the servers and so they have to take it down and like refresh it and they it's just randomly they'll just be like all right right now is a good time to restart it <laughs> like well it wasn't but okay <laughs> yeah for sure um COVID has definitely made it so that basically every tech company ever has just radically revamped the way that they do things because now they're very high in demand. Um, yep. And uh, it's not necessarily a, a bad thing for those companies. It's just, the oh. you know, you never complain about having a higher demand of work, you know? Um, unless yeah. you're the person who has to fil fulfill the order, I suppose. <laughs> but, yeah, uh, but I guess you got to be lucky you even have a job right now, I guess. You know? Yeah, that's for sure. That's for sure. There's definitely, yeah, there's definitely, a, there's definitely a, as annoying as it is when it randomly cuts out like that. The thought is like, well, at least when it's back on, it'll be better than normal. More mm. consistent. You yeah. Know? Like, one thing I haven't noticed is there used to be about, like, 10 or 11 at night where, like, the bandwidth would start to get ish iffy. I'd start to have connection. Don't have that anymore. 
<laughs> you know, they, uh, they've decided that, you know what, maybe, uh, maybe we'll actually, uh, have it so when everyone in the neighborhood is on the internet, it works. <laughs> so, that's always nice of them. So we've got someone in this lobby named Jackson. Um, I, bel I believe is that, that this Taylor? is... Yeah, they're, I think they're playing on their brother's account. Oh, so that I makes would, sense. That makes that, sense. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I'd assume that that's why the name doesn't match up. All right. So we're going to cross our fingers. That should be Taylor. Should be the only person who has the information that they need to join this lobby. Um, so what they will be doing at this point is they will be going and uh, following the procedure that they need to get through in match procedure. So they'll both pick their characters to let each other know which character they're going first. Then they're going to look at the list of five stages that are available to them, uh, the starter stage list. One of them will ban one of them, the other one will ban two, and then one will ban the first one will ban one more. So if you think about that, they've each banned two stages which means there are four stages that are banned. That means there's one left. They play on that one stage that remains. Um, so this stage striking process is there so that both players have some control over which stage they go to, but they don't just get to pick their, their strongest, most overpowered option. Um, so theoretically, this should let them arrive at a very fair stage for them to play on. The starter stages are chosen because they're the most neutral stages, the stages that tend only to... Uh, they tend not to favor either character all that much. Once that first stage is chosen, they can get things going. There's nothing else that they need to worry about there. Uh, they'll just need to make sure, of course, to choose that stage down in the lower right here. Um, if you set the preferred stage to random and the game decides to pick yours, well, now uh, you might not go to the right stage. So just got to make sure that both players select that. Um, once that's all done, they can jump into the arena and they can get their first match going. Guessing from the fact that we're doing this selecting, that uh, we're probably in that process right now. It does take a minute, so we'll give them a, a second. Are we? Uh, are we thinking maybe a uh, King DDD and Mario? So this is an interesting question um, because so we we play this game with all of the tournaments we run. We look at the uh, character icons and guess whether that is going to be indicative of the character that they choose. Eyes, as you can see, has the Bowser icon, and Eyes actually plays Bowser. But I have the Inkling icon, but I play Palatina. So it's kind of 50-50 between the two of us, and we've long had the conversation, like, which is more likely, that they play the character that they have in their avatar? or that they like the character they have in their avatar, but don't like them in Smash, and so they compensate by putting their picture in the profile, you know? So here's what we're looking at over here. We've got Zatami with the Bandana D, a very solid choice. One of the most likable characters of all time because he says absolutely nothing and is very cute. Then Jackson with the Golden Mario. So, would it be a Kirby franchise character? I'm thinking if it's a Tommy, it would be more likely to be a Kirby. I'm thinking with Jackson, it could easily not be that character at all, but Mario is very good in this game. So I'm saying, I want to say at least one of them plays the character that is in their avatar. And I'm completely dead wrong, is what we've just found out here. On we go. I should change their tags up because this is uh, Zatami versus Taylor. Three, two, one, and so we've got Zatami on the Roy. And by Roy, we mean the Bowser Jr. version. And then Taylor playing doo doo dee doo. 
It's me, Gunner, but we all know. We all know that there actually is. We see it. It's right in front of us. All right, here we go. Final destination, which is the first destination that we are heading to. So far, Zatami solidly in control for the time being. Um, applying a lot of good stage control here. Ooh. This is a strong start. It's going very aggressive. Oh my goodness! That explosion comboed. That was... Beautiful. He got the back wow. throw off, and it looked like maybe uh, Taylor had picked up the bomb, or it... I don't think that bomb sticks to you. I think it just walks towards you, and then... Maybe I'm not right about that. No, it looks like it does actually connect to you before it explodes. So, Zatami able to get some significant knockback off before it explodes on him. And it explodes while Taylor is significantly closer to the blast zone than she would have been without the back throw. So, Zatami showing that uh, he's got a pretty solid command of how Roy works. And it's going to be on... Oh, no, the oh, up B oh, no. from just a little too far down. The uh, directional air dodge going to force you to fall a pretty significant way there. So, easy mistake to make. But that will give Zatami game one. This is a best of three set. So the procedure going forward from here now is that both players will uh, go back into the DMs. What will happen is Zatami, the winner of that round, will ban... I believe it's one stage on their, our current rule set. Let me see. Picks... Bans, oh, bans three stages, actually. Oh, that's right, because we've changed our stage list to include more options. So there are three stage bans that are going to come out from Zatami. But then out of the remaining, I think, six stages at that point, because uh, in addition to the starter list, we now have some stages that are available only after game one. From the remaining six stages, Taylor will get to pick from any of those. And... She just gets to pick. It's a uh, comeback mechanic. It's a mechanic that enables her to have a little bit of an advantage going into the next round. Then Zatami will pick his character before Taylor picks hers. So if there is a character switch that's going to come out here, um, Taylor will have advanced knowledge of it, while Zatami will not. So in both of those ways, the loser of the first match gets an advantage going into the second one. Not a tremendous advantage. Um, I would say maybe 90% of the time um, the match will still go to who won game one. But it is a little bit of something that can help in a situation where it comes down to a pretty close match. Rydog's saying his eyes here. Tell him to 1v1 me. I have a feeling that y'all have probably 1v1 before. One might think. No, Riot, Riot and I play Rocket League together. And I carry him in that. And then we play Fortnite. And then I carry him in that. <laughs> <laughs> I've right, received Ryan. word from the TO that we are actually switching to best of five here. So we have even more opportunities uh, to play than we did before. So that first game, a little bit less significant than it would have normally been. Um... If this were a best of three, Zatami would be on turn like match point at this point. But since it's a best of five, he has two more matches to go before he has clinched the set. So another opportunity, I suppose, uh, for Taylor to get back in if uh, she ends up dropping another game. So we'll see what adaptations they are able to make over this longer time span that they now have to work with. They're both back into the arena. Should be ready to start any time now. Ooh, and completely switching up the characters. So we now have a Meta Knight on the side of, I believe, Zatami. Yes. Yep. And we have a Min Min on the side of Taylor. I'm going to cheat a little bit here. 
so I don't actually have the Min Min icons. But uh, she punches, right? So that's Min Min. Right there. See? Looks exactly the same. If they, if they both deal damage, they have to be the same. <laughs> I mean, they're, they're, they're both punchers, right? They do the punch thing. Ooh, big Min Min is an interesting character. Mm -hmm. I feel like uh, we have yet to see really uh, someone who's really figured out Min Min at the very highest level. Um, she's still very much a mystery as to uh, how she's played by the very best of the best. Um, so. It, you never really know what you're going to see when you have a, a Min Min that you're playing against. You, you don't really know all the tricks yet. Very, very extremely long range, obviously. Um, yeah. But uh, high commitment options, and I think her biggest Achilles heel is probably her mobility. Um, she just moves a little bit on the slow side. Um, and if somebody gets right on top of her, like uh, Meta Knight doing right now oh my god oh that was nasty oh my goodness and i don't know i can kind of just like get in and do moves faster than min min can um so min min's gonna rely on stuff like that that ridiculously long forward smash uh to be able to keep meta knight off her um so that he can't close that distance doing a good job of uh using that upward attack right there um I believe that's the up smash, but the up tilt, if I remember correctly, looks very similar. Um, it's a very quick burst option. And one of the nice things about that being the up smash in particular is that you're able to do your up smash out of a jump. Um, or, uh, sorry, out of a shield. Um, because you, when you press up, you know, that's an input that can also indicate that you're trying to jump. And the game will always let you jump out of shield. So if you hit the hit up from the shield and the game buffers, you know, getting out of shield and starting to jump, but then you input the smash attack before the jump goes off, you're able to just throw that attack out even while you're shielding. So it can be a great get off me kind of option for characters that have a fast up smash. You can see that's kind of the idea that Taylor has here with the up smashes that she's using there. Clever use of the dragon there, dropping down and letting the laser hit. A little bit too little too late, unfortunately. Zatami able to drop down and get the, I believe, down B off. Um, and at the high percent that Min Min was at at that point, that is going to be the stock. So Zatami up 2-0 over Taylor. So this will be match point, this next one. Um, there are three match points in a row if uh, Taylor keeps winning. So Tommy has to be feeling pretty confident right now. A pretty comfortable lead in both of those matches so far. Only has to win one more game while Taylor has to win three. So probably in pretty good shape, but we'll see what else Taylor has to pull out. Um, she's played two different characters so far. As has Zatami. So I can confidently say I have no bloody idea what the next matchup is going to be between these two. Kirby versus Mario? Huh? Could <laughs> the it profile be? avatar matchup? <laughs> so Confer what confirming my game, prediction? <laughs> what game is Inman from? Arms. Arms is what she is from. Um, Arms is a weird fighting game that came out on the Switch. Um, it was very early in the launch cycle. I believe it was, like, one of the first games to come out. Um, I know initially it was just, like, Breath of the Wild, but ARMS was, uh, if not out immediately with it, very close on its heels. And, uh, the game features characters with long springs for ARMS, uh, and boxing gloves of different varieties on the end of them. So you stand at a fairly significant distance, and you use the uh, Switch controllers like their Wii Remote nunchucks to flick out and fling your arm out at a crazy distance at people. 
there is a gr you can swing either arm independently you can angle them in different directions curve them so it's harder to see where they're going to end up landing you can block with them and you can grab to break someone's block by throwing both of the arms out at the same time um, and finally there is a special uh, like an ultimate attack it's basically just like a big flurry jab attack um, okay, let's see here. We've got... Okay, Zatami sticking to the Meta Knight. And then Taylor switching off onto the Donkey Kong for the final character, potentially, of this match. So, putting all of the chips on pink. The, the fancy cotton candy Donkey Kong. Ooh, I like the up tilt there, the anti-air. Goes for it a second time, though, and Ooh. Zatami able to capitalize. Nice little side B there, covering the uh, covering the center of the stage really well, so that uh, Taylor needed to get away from it. Ooh, big damage out of that! Puts him in the ground and then smacks him. Great shield on the dash attack, Zatami able to capitalize. Good match out there. And great armor through the uh, ledge guard there from Taylor. Ooh, big up smash, and that just oh, KOs. Yeah, yeah. This is a big stage. That's insanely strong. Oh. Zatami drops right back down with the back air. Tries to shut that lead down before it can start. But regardless, this is a, a much better game three from Taylor slash Jackson. I believe uh, Jackson is Taylor's brother, and she is yes. playing on his Switch account at the moment. Yes, that's, I, also, I also think that, but I just... Wanted to make sure. <laughs> no, yeah, that uh, like I think we've got that for confirmed by RTO. That is uh, okay. the information that we were given. But yes, so this that is, uh, that is why the name is Jackson when in fact we are f referring to her as Taylor. That is like the third or fourth time that Taylor has hit that. Mm -hmm. That Barry is doing some work for her. She's managing to get a lot of damage out of the follow up on that because Donkey Kong hits pretty hard if you can't move. Yes. I want to see agree. Taylor following up that up tilt with an up air, uh, jumping and pressing up an A in the air. I think that that is going to have a higher likelihood what? of connecting. Oh, oh no. no, Donkey Kong's vertical recovery is not the greatest. Uh, Taylor falls a little bit too far down, not able to bring herself back up with the up B. Uh, that's unfortunate because you, you know that that wasn't really in intended there for her to be off the edge in the first place. It's easy mistake to make so let's see if she can uh, rally and bring this one back after that error nice up b there great job getting zatami off her and doing some damage in the process gonna need to find a ko option pretty soon here just so she doesn't take any extra damage before she's on the last stock there my god that combo is stupid is that <laughs> that like so much damage seven hits yeah, because uh, Meta Knight has a whole bunch of double jumps, and so he just he can just keep using them to keep repositioning that up air on you. Um, and on top of that, his up B is a KO option. Um, so that that's a little taste of what he was like in Brawl. <laughs> in Super Smash Brothers Brawl, uh, Meta Knight was the strongest character in the entire game, and that was his bread and butter right there. Uh, he just kind of camps until you approach him. And then he gets you stuck up in the air in that ladder combo and deletes you. Ooh. Great ledge guard. That neutral B would not have KO'd in Brawl, but it KOs in this game, apparently. And Zatami able to take it 3-0 over Taylor. Signs of life there on the Donkey Kong. The Donkey Kong was looking significantly stronger. Um, so I'd like to see how Taylor fares in her other best of five set that she's going to have here. But for the time being, we are going to be switching the players out. That is the completed best of five. So we're waiting on uh, which match that's going to be. That's either going to be Taylor versus Brian, Brian Newell, or it's going to be Zatami versus Newell Brian. All right, here we go. 
getting the announcement out. We wait upon bated breath. It is going to be Taylor versus Brian. Okay, so Zatami, we are going to drop you out of the lobby real quick so that we can get Newell Brian in here. I say this with all of the love in the world, but get out. All right. Please exit the facility. If not, we will escort you out. Uh, <laughs> so we're going to have Newell Brian in here shortly. Um, was able to do that previously, so I trust that there won't be technical issues. So we should have that starting up soon. Those of you who might just be joining us, we are Bravest Esports. We run esports events for colleges and for parks and rec organizations and for ourselves all over the place, all over the country, online, all over the place. So our mission is just to bring groups of people together using esports. Um, so we try and create communities. We try to help organizers. We give them tools to work with. Um, and we also organize quite a few things ourselves, like this event here. But on top of this event here, we also have our national championship, which you'll see rotating on screen right now. The national championship is going to be on December 11th and 12th, that weekend. I believe it's one of those two days, because I think the other day is Rocket League. Um, the winner of this event will qualify for that national championship tournament along with all of the qualifiers from other tournaments that we have run in schools all across the country. Should be a grand old time, lots of different people, lots of different play styles from all over the place, lots of different characters. Should be some great experience for the player who earns the right to compete in that event. Um, and it should be a lot of fun to have someone from your school to, to root for as you watch um, so that's going to be on this Twitch channel, Bravest Esports, at that time. Check us out if you want more of that sort of thing. We have made it into the lobby with Brian and Taylor. So what they're going to be doing at this point is picking their characters and then going through the stage selection process. Ready? Looks like we've got it all figured out. All right, so this is going to be new Brian over here versus Taylor over here. It's going to be the Samus out oh. of Newell Bryan. They're matching the characters. And then we've got on, a on Dr. Mario pictures. on the part of Taylor. Character we haven't seen out of her yet. Let's see how it does. A couple of tilt attacks to open things up for Taylor. Doing a good job right now of uh, keeping Brian kind of zoned out. But Z Brian, not necessarily against the idea of being further away from the Dr. Mario. Charging up that charge shot and uh, making it clear that if uh, he can't get into center stage, he'll just sit on the side of the stage and shoot things. Ooh, that was close. Both players going very aggressive, um, throwing out a whole lot of moves. Makes for some pretty exciting gameplay. Just seeing which one wins out. Brian trying to retreat here and get that charge shot up, but Taylor is not having it. Going in with some extra aggression, and the down air almost does it. On the brink. I like the use of the pills there. A great disjointed hitbox that's going to... Uh, well, the projectile is the ultimate disjoint, as we like to say. Um, keeping... Brian zoned out so that he can't even get close enough to bring those big metal legs to bear. 186. Samus is very tanky. After all, she is wearing a metal exoskeleton. She can take a little bit more punishment than the average human. Ooh. Wow. Yeah, if you're out there battling... Lovecraftian monstrosities on a regular basis as a part of your day job. You've probably got some uh, decent protective equipment. Did they trade? I it don't like they... think so. It looked like uh, Brian got hit before uh, Taylor was going to get hit herself. Okay, because uh, it looked like 
the move had gone through, but then it didn't do any damage. So then yeah, I was the startup confused. frames had definitely happened. I don't know if the move was active yet at that point, because I don't think I saw uh, Taylor take damage. Ooh. Good juggle there. All right. From uh, Ryan. So Taylor now on the same stock, but still at a significant percentage lead. Using that down air again, trying to get the KO out here. Charging a forward oh. smash. Oh no, Brian with the forward air. I think he thought that he was going to end up landing on the stage. And he was just the slightest bit off. And so the character does the aerial. And not only does is that not what they were looking for, the up B or the double jump or whatever. But because they did it as they passed the ledge, they didn't grab onto the side. What that forward smash. Combo. Massive. We'll take Brian out of the equation, and Taylor is up again in her second set here. So the stage choice here, I think, might come into play in a, a significant way, because what we've been seeing from Brian is that he wants to run away and shoot charge shots and missiles. Um, he wants to keep Taylor off him. My controls were flipped. How do you change that? Um, are you, so when you ch go to choose your character here, let me show you something. So when I go to change fighter on this menu, you have the option to choose your tag and controls are tied to these tags. So if you're not using the tag that you normally use, your controls might be mixed up for you. So that might be something that you uh, need to investigate. Um, if you do need to end up changing your controls, uh, you would need to step out of the lobby for just a second. Oh, no, don't start yet. Uh, don't start it. Well, uh, Eyes, would you mind uh, sharing your view if you have the uh, capture card set up for it? I think we can still uh, get this to work out. But they started the match before I was sitting in the spectator stands, so I'm not able to see it. This should work. Okay. Oh so my this, goodness, what a start from Jackson. This will be framing just a little bit, but what I'm going to do here is I am going to pop this on, pop this off, and you should be able to see once I've got this set up. There we go. All right, let's get this centered a little bit. Oh, boy. This start from, from Jackson, my goodness. Only takes 23% and take the stock. Okay, that's pretty close at any rate. Um, apologies for the framing. This is just the result of having oh to my. view it through Discord. Um, but at least we get to see some of it here. Just, just holds the smash attack and says, "You, you, you could just stand in front of this, right?" Oh my goodness, Jackson is popping off. <sighs> oh. All right. Spike Oof. attempt. The forward smash comes through. Taylor recovers the ledge, but the charge shot is there. She knows about it and she shields it, but she gets grabbed immediately on running up. Oh, I like the idea to come up with the back air, but uh, Taylor sniffing that out and staying a little too far away. Fires a charge shot, goes in and gets the grab again. We've seen that combination earlier. We'll see if uh, Taylor can adapt to it. Oh, another grab. Unfortunately, Samus, while she does have a, a very long range grab, doesn't have an awful lot that she can do to combo out of it. So each grab is just going to be the, the damage you get from each individual throw. And so while Brian winning neutral quite a few times in that matchup, not able to get enough punishment off of those attacks to make it work out for him in the end. All right. That was an impressive game three from, uh, from Taylor. Wait. The immediate run back. I thought that was game three. Uh, that was game two. Um, so Taylor is now up 2-0. Oh. Oh. You need my screen. 
Nope, I've got it now. Okay. Um, it, that happens when I am out of the lobby at the time that the match starts. All right, here we go. On town and city, so stage with some uh, platforms up there, up there in the air. They're very high platforms, so generally, uh, it's not the easiest thing to keep a combo going if you get someone stuck up there. They're more often useful on defense for recovering. Big forward smash coming out of Taylor there. Lots of damage. Ryan just hasn't figured out how to deal with that ledge guard effectively. Because Jackson can only hit in that one spot when they're charging it up. But Ryan just keeps kind of just popping up right in front of it. So maybe change up the, the game plan there. It's up onto the ledge, tries a get-up attack, but uh, Taylor's spacing it out on the ledge really well there. Are you going to get it back? Ooh. No. Dr. Mario with a very short recovery, so... Ooh, I like the air steer there from Brian, actually. Faking Taylor out, making her think that he's going left and then landing right. Great dash attack. Brian got her on the ledge. Throws out the grab. Oh, but Taylor rolls this time. A little bit of adaptation there. She's catching oh, on God. to how Brian is using that grab to uh, take advantage of her shield. Because what he's been doing is conditioning her to shield by throwing out a lot of charge shots. And uh, then instead of throwing out the charge shots, sometimes he's throwing out the grab instead. And uh, so that's a really useful conditioning that he's doing. Uh, the problem is that Samus's grab is just not netting him as much damage as Taylor is getting off of her openings. Ooh, the air dodge, though, is going to seal it, so... Brian brings it the last stock. There could be some daylight in this match for him. Oh no, he presses up A instead of up B. That's so unfortunate. Oh man, you hate to see it end like that, but that is game three. Taylor taking it 3-0 in the match against Brian. So... Taylor finishing up with a respectable 1-1 one and one record there. Brian, however, still has one more match. Brian should stay in this lobby, and we need to get Zatami back in here to finish out this round robin. We are going to drop Taylor out of here. So that because we have a lobby size of four. Um the reason we don't want multiple people in this lobby right now is that it raises the tick or lowers the tick rate. It makes it so that the um, it's it's going to update slower over the internet. Um, so we want it to be the best environment. You can see it's having a little bit of trouble with lag towards the end there. That's just kind of Ultimate's online. Oh no no! Don't leave Brian! Don't leave Brian! You're in for one more. Um, we'll get him back in here. Don't you worry. Um, but we'll have Brian versus Zatami in here. We saw Zatami earlier playing primarily the Meta Knight, but, uh, I believe they also played a different character earlier. Do you remember who the, the very first character they played was? It was against the me brawler that was really Sans. Who did they play against that? Oh, I'm pulling a blank. Roy, Roy is who it was, the the Bowser Jr. It was, it was, that's right. I it was the Bowser Jr. I think my cat is doing something. Let me go and make sure that it, it's it's not that someone's locked out or something, but I think it's just the cat jiggling the handle. <laughs> One second. <laughs> Yeah, okay. The cat just really, really wants to get into that room. <laughs> and so it's a locked door, and she's just going jiggle, 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 hitting it over and over and over and over again on the door handle. 
Must must obtain entrance. <laughs> need need what's inside. Don't Revian. know what, but I need it. There's a bed in there that I want to hide inside. It was really cute. It was kind of her her, her safe place when uh, we were first moving in here. Um, one of the other cats was picking on her, and so she would run into that room, and she it was like a, one of those uh, beds that fold up a futon like into a couch. And oh, so yeah, yeah, there's yeah. some space in in between, you know, where the the springs go and everything. And yeah. she found a way to slip into that space, and she would just kind of hide there. So you always had to check inside the bed before you would move it to make sure that the cat wasn't in there. <laughs> it's like uh, <laughs> when you see someone with like one of those big pickup trucks, the huge wheel wells. And they always tell you, yeah, check check the front of your tires, because um, there are pictures circulating online of like cats that'll just be chilling in the wheel well because it's warm. Um, all right, we're waiting on Zatami here, hoping we can get them into the lobby fairly shortly. Had him in for a match earlier, so we know it's at least functional. We know it's not an internet issue, necessarily. Brian says, go easy on me. <laughs> <laughs> I love these messages. These messages are great. Nope, not that one. All of these are just absolute gold. You, the one, the one and only thought that matters. <laughs> <laughs> how, how do I threaten my opponent's life through Smash Chat? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think there's a better option than just growling at them. Do you know how? How what? Do you, do you know how funny it would be if if you could like submit on your account like uh like phrases that you'd like to have, <laughs> and so like this, people would review it and then accept whether you could have it. So you could have your own like quick chats mm. in games, and so like you just or like not it quick chats in games. Like you join, you know how it has like the before battle like wording. It just goes, be ready to be mick-bodied. <laughs> oh <laughs> you just get to have whatever whatever words that they, like, whatever, like, Nintendo would accept. Oh, my goodness. That would be the most insane job to have, to just be the guy who determines whether speech is pr sufficiently profane to ban. <laughs> yeah. You're just, like, reading them, and there's just some, like... There's some, like, six-year-old that just goes, you lose. <laughs> You're like, yeah, yeah, we'll accept that. I'll allow it. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I think that'd be so funny. I mean, you probably wouldn't get a reply and an acceptance for, like, under four months. But, like, you know, after those four months, you might have a quick chat that you made. By the way, anyone got song requests? Because we can sw switch those up. We have options. Like 836 options. We'll kick things back off with an old classic. Pew, 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 
Eyes, did I ever tell you about the, this song in Smash Camp? The song? No. The so Smash Camp, uh, for about. those of you who don't know, it's a big Super Smash Brothers melee tournament. Uh, some of the best players in the world will be there every year. Um, it's held in Prescott, Arizona by actually a num another member of the Bravest Esports team, Mikey. Um, he's a well-known uh, commentator in the Smash Melee community, um, as well as being a, a, an ultimate commentator for us. And uh, he runs a tournament out of a campground, just like log cabins, you know, basketball courts, big fields, walks through the woods, like a real legit summer camp campground. Um, and that's where the tournament is run. You just go out there for a weekend and hang out with all of the Smash players. It's super chill. It's always such a good time, a great way to unwind. Um, very, very popular among the top players. Not necessarily for being the best, you know, competitive format in that, you know, a lot of people are just there to have a good time and not taking it quite as seriously, but it's a great, great way to unwind and hang out with all the people who share your hobby. Um, absolutely wonderful tournament. Highly recommend it if you're into Melee and you ever get the opportunity. Or PM or Rivals of Ether or any of the other games that they run there. But, so, one night... Um, we, we all leave the venue, you know, we get kicked out at the, an appropriate time so that um, we can keep the venue closed up, make sure that it's uh, all secure because we've got, you know, dozens and dozens of TVs and video game consoles in there. And uh, in the morning, sometime around, I think like 8 in the morning or something, I'm going out and taking a walk uh, to get breakfast. And I pass by the venue, I'm like, wait, do I hear something? And it's a very, very loud DK rap what you are listening to right now in this game. And I walk over and I'm like, the doors are all shut. The windows are all shut. This is just that loud. I walk in and he's got one of the TVs, the loudest TV he could find turned all the way up as loud as it possibly can go with the DK rap. And every TV in the venue is frozen, paused on a picture of Donkey Kong doing his shrug taunt. <laughs> it's beautiful. That, I that, loved it. That that is actually next level. <laughs> that, that is that is the ultimate meme. Jackie Tran is the one responsible for that. Check out JackieTran.com for all of your Super Smash Brothers tips and tricks. Uh, he has a web page, not yes. YouTube. Uh, JackieTran.com is the webpage. Um, highly recommend checking it out when you get the opportunity. Anyway, um, we have got Brian Samus up against Zatami's Roy here. And by Roy, we mean the Bowser Jr. version, not the Fire Emblem uh, anime sword boy. Making good use of these little chomper boys, the, the uh, Mecha Koopas. They bite you, and then they blow up. They're not very friendly. They're adorable, but not, not the most huggable things. You probably don't want to, don't want to try that. So. Is it Tommy with a great up air string here? Oh my goodness. Tons of damage coming out of that. Outrageous. Oh. Ugh. That move yeah, that, that makes me extremely uncomfortable. Yeah, it's, it's like... A, you know the move Lick in the Pokemon games? That never yeah. sat right with me. <laughs> from like, from like Lickitung? Yeah. It, yeah. Like, or, or like the ghost Pokemon. They all have Lick. Yep. And like one you of the what? the side effects is that it paralyzes you. Like, what the? Yeah, it paralyzes you with disgust. <laughs> I mean, Japan is known for their horror games. We just didn't expect Pokemon to be one of them. Are they known for their horror games? That is something I didn't know. For, for their horror media in general, um, oh. you ever heard of, uh, I think it's Junji Ito? Um, a very well-known graphic novelist who took the medium and used it for horror in some ways that y you probably have never seen before. To be fair, J Japan does a lot of things that I've never seen before. Square this is water true. Power. This is Square true. Oh, no, no, no. Don't get blown up. Okay. Whew. I was worried that that was just going to do it right there, that he was going to get bit on the butt while he was busy charging a charge shot, but caught it this time. Oh, what? what? He, how did he know? How did Zatami know? What? 
That's insane. What a read. Jesus. That was the most calculated follow-up I've ever seen. <laughs> I was gonna say, you gotta watch out because the Mecha Koopa will actually turn around once it hits a ledge and walk back at you. And that was what uh, wow. Newell Bryan was not anticipating. Poof. But I didn't anticipate it hard enough that I would have had a back air ready to go on the back side of that. Not only did he know the timing perfectly, he also knew the angle that Brian was going to get knocked at by that. Nuts. Absolutely nuts. Uh, I'm still trying to comprehend what I've just seen because that was... I mean, sees it happening and just goes, yeah, 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 right here. <laughs> and just leaps up into the sky and hits the follow-up. And then, and then just switches characters. Uh, yeah. We, we got oh, Brian yeah. switching characters. So Brian's sitting on the cloud now. Zatami... Oh, that's true, that's true. Zatami yeah. has played the Meta Knight this entire time, but uh, those two matches was playing the Roy instead. Yeah, just like, yeah, I, I, although I did something pretty spectacular, yeah, I'm just going to switch characters. But uh, Brian on the cloud now. Cloud, a uh, really great option... Uh, for zoning out a small gnat like character that you have with uh, Meta Knight. Um, that's, that's, that's kind of how I, I look at characters like this. I uh, kind of developed this way of thinking of a character from Project M. But uh, there are some characters that are just like flies, and you have to swat them away with something that's longer and more disjointed than they have. Um, and that seems to be kind of the play. <laughs> Seems kind of be the, the the play exactly that that big Buster Sword. It's a glorified fly swatter. Um, <laughs> so that that's definitely the game plan here from Brian, and I think it is actually working remarkably well. The only issue here is that Cloud's recovery is kind of booty, and because of that, he dropped a stock a little bit early there from uh, trying to do a little bit too much off stage. Even so, this is a much better look right now from Newell Bryan than we have seen so far. And uh, I'm definitely excited to see how the rest of this match shapes up. Because aside from that one mistake, Bryan has been outplaying Zatami in this game. I would definitely agree. Zatami just, I mean, just kind of swinging right now. Not even... Yeah, really Zatami kind of getting zoned out right now, and that's exactly how I was anticipating uh, this this counterpick of characters to go. Okay. Up smash. Catches him on the landing. That was such a good stop. So, Brian, he runs at him to make Zatami think he has to throw out a hitbox to defend himself, and then he just stopped dead right before that hitbox was going to hit him. Crazy read coming out of Brian. This is a completely different match. This is almost as one-sided in the other direction as the last one was. Zatami might get forced back onto the Roy or something. Yeah, that's what I was thinking, is that this character uh, swap actually... Since there isn't any, any sort of projectile or anything from Meta Knight, has just caused a straight zone out uh, from Brian. Ooh, Brian does not have the uh, limit to recover with this time. Barely makes it back. I wasn't sure if he could make it. Yeah, we'll be able to make this one. Um, in that case, Brian probably wanted to recover to the platform instead of trying to recover to the ledge. Because um, the up B had to come out earlier so that he had a hitbox covering himself. And if he lands on the platform there, he's going to land fairly early and be able to be actionable sooner. So I think that was probably the play. Either that or maybe try to air dodge through whatever, whatever Meta Knight is putting out there. Um, so that little edge guard there gives Zatami a lot of room to work with, and he's suddenly opening things up on this final stock here. We'll see if uh, Brian can restabilize. Whoo! That was close. I mean, he needs to get himself break. off of that ledge. Stay away from the offstage. Oh, oh my god, he's got limit. Oh, and he uses it oh, on the no. projectile. Goes the wrong direction, and Meta Knight is too high up for it anyway. Um, a finishing error. touch there, though. It's called the finishing touch for a reason. Uh, would have been a KO option that I think would probably KO Meta Knight even at this relatively low percent. Big smash attack comes out. Is Itami confident that that's going to whiff? 
tries yeah, to get the edge guard here. It's great high recovery. That was exactly what Brian needed to do. Dash Jack gets punished with the back air out of shield. And the oh. tornado will do it. He trades, actually. Wow. So Brian saw it coming and actually had to move on its way out. Just wasn't quite fast enough. That's a matter of a couple frames. Much stronger showing there from Brian. Definitely impressed with the cloud here. So, with the match ending up that close, we'll see if this game three might go a different way. They're not even bothering to switch stages or anything. They're just jumping right back in. They're running it back. Three, two, we end up on Lilat. I have to think that this is just a random stage selection that they've got set on. Um, because they didn't have time to really decide which stage they were going to and have both players choose it. So I'm guessing that this is what they ended up deciding to do. Um, so this stage here, going to work really well for uh, Meta Knight, I think, in that he's going to be able to sit underneath the platforms here while he's got Cloud stuck up in the air and do things like this. Cloud does have a decent juggle game himself. He's going to be able to cover those platforms pretty well, but Meta Knight has wow. many double jumps. And so if he gets something, he's going to be able to punish a lot harder off of that one opening. Cloud throwing out the Limit Blade Beam. Gets shielded all the way through, so no impact on Zatami. And Zatami with a strong down smash. Tries to go all the way out there with the down smash. Oh my god, he stage spiked him. He didn't need to hit him. If he just let him drop yeah, there, he's fine, but... Uh, did I Brian guess it tech that. Do they have the recovery? Maybe. It depends on whether he teched the bottom of the stage or the side of the stage. Um, if it was the okay. side of the stage, he could definitely make it back. If it was the bottom, he's probably caught underneath it. Um, and there's nothing to be done. But uh, Zatami, I guess he, he had to use the side B because he had to recover at some point there. So I think most players, uh, if they're thinking about that possibility, they're probably going to drop a little bit before they use the up B to give Cloud time to fall below them. Um, but just ended up looking a little bit cooler of a stock than Cloud just kind of falling anticlimactically. Oh no, the side B oh, off the that, side. What? That is an error. That's yep. Uh, Maybe he was going for like the, the suicide stock there where he carries Cloud off with him and then has a full stock lead at the end, but... Yeah, Backfires a little true. bit. Oh no. Drops the stock. Ooh, the air dodge. I can see exactly what Brian was going for there. He was trying to get up on stage and then shield or dodge to get away from the attack Meta Knight was putting out, but he was off stage, unbeknownst to him. So the input does not do what he intends it to do. He just falls. It's a really rough mistake oh. for a character with a, a bad recovery like Cloud. Couple of strong smash attacks coming out here. If he gets the stock fairly soon here. Oh, he goes to the blade beam again. I want to see him, first of all, uh, trying to bait out that shield because we've seen that before. I also want to see him trying the finishing touch because um, that is the, the, the down B. The, you know, it's a move that uh, if you don't have limit, charges limit. And then if you do have limit, it's a big finisher. Um, it's kind of clouds uh, bread and butter finishing move in Smash 4. But I don't believe it's been nerfed to the point of irrelevance at all in this match here. You might see the uh, side B used instead for the limit as well. Alright, there it is. So Brian a little bit behind on percent, but about to hit limit. Oh no, is, is he out? He uh. needs to use the limit break to get up. He can't. And that is the set there. Zatami going up 2-0 in the tournament. Zatami will be your winner tonight with Newell Bryan placing, I believe, in third and Taylor placing in second. So congratulations to Zatami for taking it home. Zatami has qualified on the back of that result for the Bravest National Championship that will be happening in December. So look forward to that one. Come and uh, support your... Uh, fellow students on stream should be a good time meantime though that is going to be it for us for the for the day the night uh we're all on pacific time right so it's the, it's the day um 
So that's going to be it for us for the day. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. It's been a pleasure casting with you. I am Jem. And this is Eyes. And this is us signing off on behalf of Bravest Esports and Clark College. Thanks for watching, everybody.